Today I'll be talking about some interesting things I found on Shodan. Um, Shodan is, uh, if for people, people that are unfamiliar with it, it's basically a search engine that aggregates um, banners from every IP on the internet given something to the effect of eight ports. So let's think of a port scanner that scans eight ports the entire internet over and over and over and over again and just databases everything. Um, so this is not your average uh, Shodan talk. Um, I am not going to be telling you, hey, look, I can find switches and servers and routers on the internet. Well, that's we already know that. That's that's kind of boring. Um, today, I'm, I'm going to try and articulate how we can turn Shodan into, into kind of a gateway drug. So what do people normally put on the internet? Well, we know we put routers and switches and servers and cameras and other stuff. Meh, that's boring. We've seen it. What else? What else is interesting? What's what's the long tail? What's the cool stuff that that people are putting on the internet that people don't talk about, that businesses don't like to admit that they put on the internet? Um, is anybody actually even looking? Like, are, is there anybody that's qu trying to quantify what is plugged into the internet and how scary that could be? Um, I don't think anybody's done this, and if they have, they're not sharing their notes or telling anybody else about it. So basically, I've spent several days up till ridiculous hours in the morning. Um, looking at random stuff on Shodan. And today we're going to examine the long tail of the internet. So first, um, I have a little editorial on policy. Um, anybody work at a company that you basically would get strung up if you port scanned or ran Nmap or anything like that without written permission from several different management types or directors, anything like that? No? One? Yeah, one. So uh, I've worked in these kind of environments. Um, you're, you're sitting in an environment uh, where you're responsible for tens of thousands of machines and there's this massive, massive wide attack surface, but you can't enumerate that attack surface because you're not allowed to scan it. Uh, the bad guys can scan it, sure. They'll just use a bunch of proxies from China and that's fine. But you as the employee working in the security department, you're not allowed to do that. And I, don't know, I think that's personally kind of silly. Um, like how, how do you know if your marketing department has set up a dozen Amazon EC2 instances with the common IT shared password uh, out on the cloud uh, into environments where your normal security and IT uh, divisions can't see that at all? Like how do you know that your parts of your IP, if you have IP in a company or credentials or configs or security certificates or anything like that aren't being put in somebody else's cloud without permission? Uh, just because, oh, the marketing department didn't feel like dealing with IT that day. So, interesting stuff to consider. So, before we begin, I have to say everything here that I'm going to show you is public. Everything is open. There was no credentials required. There was no brute forcing. There was no cracking. There was no, nothing like that. It was literally you point a browser at something and go, oh my god, why is this online? Um, <laughs> seriously, like, you, 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 you might poop a little. Um, also, no systems were altered, no configuration settings were changed, no radio buttons were checked, nothing. This was entirely a read-only exercise. So, now that that's out of the way, webcams! They're fun! Um, this is a really fancy pants system made by March Networks that allows you to see that, that list on the left there. You can drag and drop those cameras into the right side and then you can choose, like see those blue squares at the top left? You can choose the layout format you want and you can drag and drop cameras from the left into this thing. Um, and you can sit and watch. This was um, based, based on the, this was somewhere in France, I guess, and um, based on the names, we think it's a gold mine. We're not 100% sure though. Um, but you know, the, the first thing that I noticed was, hey, there's a dude watching the same cameras I'm watching. Hey, that's cool. <laughs> Who watches the watchers, right? <laughs> Me. <laughs> So, you know, there's more like, they're all over the place. There's thousands of these things. So, you know, this is some pharmacy. I don't, uh, pharmacy, same thing. You can cruise around and look at stuff. And here's some bridge, some municipality, I'm guessing. I don't know why a, a private organization or, or, or uh, a business would want to point a bridge or point a camera system like this at a bridge. So there's like five or six different views of the same bridge. And like, they, either they're like bridge or files or they, they run the bridge, I don't know. So then, you know, uh, freeway in China. Okay, sure, um, some dude, literally, just <laughs> some dude. Yeah, so, okay, in January, uh, if, if any of you are unlucky enough to follow me on Twitter, in January, I, I, I found a, a blog post on console, consolecowboys.com of a guy who reverse engineered the firmware to his webcam. Uh, he basically found out that TrendNet had put a hard-coded backdoor <laughs> into every camera, so, um, 
if essentially if you know what the camera's IP address is and you you give it like slash anani like anon y slash mjpeg.cgi it's direct object access to the video feed so if you know that the camera's IP address you give it this URL you're looking at that so um, I wrote a Python script that I'll be releasing at the end of my talk um, that you plug in a search it goes to Shodan it finds several hundred of these um, and wraps them in image source tags and then splits them up into pieces so you have six or seven pages worth of a hundred cameras deep of live video from everywhere in the world um, this was an interesting thing I initially when I first discovered this I kind of flipped out about it and I, re I, re I initially released the uh, the HTML output which I think may have been a bad idea in retrospect um, when I'll get to that, that I talk about that a little later. So uh, another hilarious thing is private corporate webcams. Like people are putting, oh, security cameras that go into your business or go into your private residence or go wherever. You know, well, if you're buying a $20 camera, you're probably getting that equivalent amount of security. Banks, this was really funny. This is, I think, Malaysia or something to that effect or Thailand. I don't know where, but their money is bright red. Uh, that's a money counter there in the top right. And if you watch this long enough, you'll see somebody plunk money into it and they count it. And then I don't know if it's a currency exchange place or a bank or what, because there's no context. You're just looking at literally a JPEG and there's no, uh, there's no way to really tell. Um, you know, data centers, there's a bunch of these. Like, uh, and there's even um, Net NetBots brand cameras that will tell you um, like the temperature of the data center and the date and some, in some cases GPS coordinates. So these guys, you can start, you know, really, really simple OSN level stuff. You can look at this and say, wow, they really like Dell and Cisco. Like, all this stuff up here, up here on the top left is all Cisco switching equipment. I think one of those is an ASA, but yeah, they really like their Dells. Um, Shantytown, I, I had no idea, not I know. But an interesting a little piece of information, there's a little pro tip for you. See all that purple in the frame? Uh, that is an indicator that this camera is using night vision mode. Um, if your camera's using night vision, night vision mode, certain materials and certain colors will turn purple like that. Um, so uh, if you've ever pointed a remote control at your phone or at a webcam or anything else that emits IR, you get that kind of purple color, That's it's the same thing. So it's just those surfaces, I guess, are more reflective to IR. Um, this, is, this is a fun one. Polycom systems, like the big fancy pants Polycom 7000 systems with auto answer turned on. You call it with, you download X meeting for free, you point it at the IP address, the thing picks up and you're looking at a conference room and you can hear it. You're, I mean, so H.D. Moore did a talk on this um, at another conference several months ago, uh, which inspired me to go tinkering. But yeah, there's a bunch of these as well, too. So completely open, auto answer, no config, give it an IP, go, you're eavesdropping on a, on a conference room. Uh, and then you can mix and match stuff. You can do like social media mashup style stuff. Now you have skater gear, which everybody's worried about, on camera. So, okay, um, I might not have access to the SCADA controller. Um, but, but I can watch it, yeah. So, I mean, a lot of this stuff is going to pertain to John's talk, uh, or Arclight's talk right before, right before mine. So all the systems that he was talking about where you can open and shut relays and you can turn alarms on and off and you can, like, mess with doors. People are putting web servers on these devices and putting them on the Internet and not putting any credentials. And they're using code from, like, the 70s or 80s. I mean, like, it's this really, really old technology that they decided, let's put a web server on this and put it on the Internet. And they did, and then I found them. Um, <laughs> Like m more stuff on webcams. This is some German, some German webcam from somewhere that's doing. I'm guessing it's pumping some kind of gas. I don't know. Here's another one. Uh, the power meter. Where is it? I have no idea. I can probably narrow it down to a city, but that's about it. Um, places where people know they're being watched and by who. So things are getting a little more interesting. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Yeah, some office. Okay. Um, uh, something, I'm not 100% sure what this is, but last night I went and I figured out what the katakana means. I don't know what the kanji is, but it's like. Toraito dash to one. It's like Toraito to. I have no idea. No idea. If anybody can think of that. Um, you know, more valves, buttons. Okay. Eh, now we're starting to get a little bored again. Okay. It's kind of cool. It's read only. We're looking at it. We're, we can't really do anything. Then I found this. What on earth is this? Rely on T2000. What? I don't understand. Let me do the Googles. Oh. <laughs> It's a hydrogen fuel cell. It's a half rack tall hydrogen fuel cell that spits out somewhere like two kilowatts and they use this to power um, cell side backups. So like when in San Diego, when the power goes down, um, pre presumably you could have some of these things sitting on mountaintops or wherever the cell sites are, making sure that your cell phones can still work uh, when the power's out. 
Uh, it looks kind of industrial. There's a lot of documentation on this thing. If you just Google for rely on T2000, the docs are everywhere. Um, this is kind of cool. I didn't know you could turn it into a hydrogen fuel cell. Holy crap. Um, it gets used a lot in dot .mil places. They were c c kind enough to put up a, a, a uh, grid of where they're used. So, um, public, you can Google for this. Why would they do that? Um, this is how you use it. This is how you hook it up. Um, I'd probably see Arclight for this. Um, so, where do you find these things? I mean, besides dot .mil places. Like, how, how do you recognize one of these things? Oh, they, they tell you. Um, <laughs> so, again, the docs are very, very handy. Um, th things are going well for the casual Googler. Um, so, security predominantly in a lot of these things is a, is a ridiculous joke. Um, this is about as far as I can go in terms of reversing. Um, I'm still learning things like IDA and registers and whatnot. But uh, this was easy enough. So, uh, there was a web interface to one of these things, uh, which I'll, I'll try and point out later when it comes across. Um, the uh, web, web, web interface was some sort of custom thingy. Um, you view the source code, and the source code linked to or included three .teq files. So this is one of the .teq files. You can just wget it off the thing. There's no protection for, for the file. You wget it, and then you literally, this is me opening it in VI. That's about as, as far as I can go with reversing at the moment. So I cracked it open in VI. The password's there. It's, I'll give you a hint. It's all in lowercase. But like the hard-coded hard password in a, in a binary file available for download on the unit. Like, what's the point? It's, it's, like, it's like the keypads where you're wondering, what's the code to the keypad? And there's a sticky for the pizza guy. It's the same thing, but you know, in a browser. Uh, this one was actually really cool. Uh, I've never, uh, it's a, a wind farm um, turbine. And this is a, a kind of a big one because it looks like it's spitting out 37 amps at 1.7 kilowatts. So it's a fairly large one. And this is one unit generating that much power from the wind. So uh, I went and I looked these guys up and they're uh, deployed at like large farms and places like that where you'd want one or two, maybe three at the most. But they're, you know, 40 feet tall and they spin around and, and they make power. And you can hit them with a browser. Um, so these controllers, um, like again, the, John was mentioning in his last talk, they control a lot of stuff. In this case, this was some huge church cathedral thing somewhere. This is a, a screenshot of uh, a view from the actual controller, from the website. Um, you can, for this particular building, you can control all HVAC and lighting. That means you're sitting behind a computer somewhere else in the world, and you can mess with the lights, you can mess with the power, you can mess with um, uh, the heating and cooling of the, of the building. In some cases, you can mess with uh, the alarm systems, you can mess with doors, I mean, you name it, like, um, another one. Um, and they even give you, like, conveniently floor plans, like, oh, I'm going to shut off the power to the staircase, or I'm going to mess with the temperature over there. I, it makes it pretty, like, like, like I said, people are wrapping these things in web servers and putting them on the internet, and there's no credentials. You just point your browser at this stuff and it goes. Um, power meters, um, interestingly enough, like, this is, uh, this is, I don't think it's the one that was, like, that horribly vulnerable, but, um, this one gives you little trend graphs and tells you how much power consumption um, wherever this is is using. Um, and some of this is aggregate, like some of these units will actually aggregate all the power for like an entire apartment building. Can't really do, I mean, maybe a social engineering attack, I don't know, I can't really, I can't think of much to do with it. Um, then I started finding controllers, um, their system's like a Niagara style system, it's like a brand, I guess, but they, um, their, their little depictions are getting a little bit more colorful, a little bit more intricate. You can tell uh, how much airflow is going through this and that. You can start manipulating different vents and things like that. And okay, we're starting to get a little more interesting. This is getting a little more crafty. Um, these systems are, you know, they keep getting bigger and more interesting. Like this one has um, a, a heat pump, three water heaters, and like you can see on the left side where the cold water goes in and there's pressures and flows, flow rates and stuff. And on the right, like there's a heat pump and then Stuff happens. I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. Um, I'm starting to get the impression that this is like potentially a high, high pressure system you can mess with. And that's when things start getting even more interesting. Uh, rich people apparently use this thing. This is somebody's house. Um, and it's the same sort of system. You can like, it's uh, uh, the front end is those Honeywell thermostats. Um, and in this system, you can, uh, this was alarms, lighting and HVAC, which means I can mess with their water heater, I can mess with the alarm to the house, I can mess with their lighting. So if I want to really freak somebody out, uh, you know, they have a website for it. Um, 
So it gets really crafty because, uh, uh, you, you know, the technology on the back end has been around for something like 30 years and nobody's ever considered the security, well, outside of people here, have ever considered the security implications of, of stuff like this, really. And uh, uh, the web devs are starting to get better with graphs and things, so they're, they're putting trending data in these things. So, like, this is that pri private, re private residence. You can see the trending data for their water heater, and you can see that, I um, can't really read the dates on the bottom, but you can tell that... Uh, the weather has been getting warmer, so they don't need to run the water heater so much anymore. And you can see the graph as the trend goes down. Uh, here's another one, a solar water setup, where you have sort of two tanks. One of them is dealing with just really hot water, and the other one's dealing with water that needs to go to the panel and then back down. And Okay, that's kind of cool. Again, pressures, flows, sweet. Not a lot of really interesting stuff you can do with this just at the moment, but, you know, an interesting nugget of information is interesting, right? So here's another one. Um, this one's this one's absolutely hilarious because this is where it starts getting really really funny. Um, that thermostat there, that Honeywell thermostat, um, you've probably seen that before in buildings, like schools and offices and hotels and you name it. You can interact with that thing from the website. Like you can virtually go and hit the the buttons to make it hotter and colder, uh, which is really funny because I was in a, a traffic school class several months ago that had one of these things on the wall, and we couldn't for the life of us get the room to stop being ice cold. And now I'm thinking that there was like some kid down the hallway going, ha ha ha, ha click, 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 ha ha ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. Yeah, so I, I laughed when I found that. I'm like, oh, that's, that's awesome. Um, oh, so here's, the, here's the, uh, the front end to that system, the TEQ file that allows you, uh, that hands you the password. Um, fortunately, this one didn't even ask for the password. <laughs> but uh, this one, again, I think it's like, uh, I'm, I'm not an electrician. Um, yeah, there's a little bit of information disclosure here. You can see um, the make and model number and a local IP address like on the inside. So obviously this thing, <laughs> somebody poked a hole in their firewall for this because this is sitting on a 192.168 subnet. So somebody had the, the bright idea of saying, hey, there's this cool thing that controls my power. Let's let the internet touch it. Um, so there's larger industrial systems. Uh, this is an example of one of the units that's, that's used. Um, basically what this is is it's a set of relays uh, that you can control with a web server, and you can give it some some logic. Uh, for this one in particular, it's you, we're getting back to the whole sort of. I'm getting the feeling they're high high low pressure systems, and and if I really mess with it, like maybe I could do some damage, or maybe make a water heater explode. Um, so you have three water heaters, or four water heaters, or an exchanger, a bunch of pumps and valves, and you have cold water going in one place and hot water coming out another. Anybody seen that Mythbusters episode where they blew up the water heater? That's, um, you, you, I don't know if they, you could actually do that maybe because the water heaters generally have their own built-in like sort of fail-safes, but you blow up three or four water heaters, that'll make the news. Um, so I found a whole bunch of stuff, right? But I've sort of been rambling, right? What, a, what a, of everything I found is even remotely actionable? Okay, cool. So we've, we piddled around on Shodan and we found some hilarious stuff and we can laugh about it, but like, what implications does that have? Well, OSINT is fashionable these days. Let's flex that muscle and see what we can do. So level one, very, very simple recon. Simple recon. There's a, a thing that I really love to use because in my endeavors in this, in this little adventure, uh, this has come in monumentally useful. This is a thing called Chrome Ultimate Flag. Chrome Ultimate Flag is an extension for Chrome that will tell you just a little bit of basic information about the website you're visiting, like what city it's in. That's all I really cared about uh, because when you're looking at, say, I don't know, a webcam, and it's sunny in San Diego and dark wherever they are. They're obviously not in the same time zone. Where are they? Are they in the US? Are they not in the US? And when you get to the stuff, it's really not a national thing. It's, they're literally, these things are all over the globe. So in a lot of cases, you won't know what it is you're looking at unless you actually check. So what can we first, what can we see, right? Simple, simple OSN, just basic observation stuff. It's daytime. You know, when I saw this, it was also daytime, so the problem in the U.S., the cars have the United States license plates. Um, there's a reception, as you can, the lighting is, uh, it's a little bright in here, but you, uh, on the right-hand side of the top right frame, there's a receptionist playing on a computer, and you can, you can visibly see the display, and um, that camera in the top right is pan, tilt, zoom, and you can control it. <laughs> so, what can we do with this? Just as an exercise, just no, nothing scary or malicious, what can we do just to have playtime and to learn? Well, we can pan the camera over to the front door that has the company logo on it. And underneath it says, Security Integrators. <laughs> they left their camera up. Really? These, okay. So this was a little, this was as tricky as 
horizontally flipping an image was. This was reversed. Um, I don't. I didn't want to like call these people out or get them in trouble. So I've I've obfuscated the name of the company. Um, but based on the name of the company and the fact that I could tell what city that they were in, I could Google Maps where they are. So now I know what the environment around the place looks like. Now I know what the inside of the building looks like. I know the hair color of the receptionist. I know what operating system I run. I know what cars they drive. Like suddenly, we're just playing on the internet. I've gone from playing on the internet to like, hey, cool, I have a pile of info for what would potentially be a very successful social engineering campaign. Hmm. <laughs> Level two, interactions. And another disclaimer, I had no idea any of this happened. This was a result of me having published some of the webcams in January. Um, no, nobody, they sent me, they waited like a month or two and then they sent me these screen caps and said, you're gonna laugh, you're gonna, I'm like, oh, here we go. Um, so, uh, if you have enough information about a place, you can call them and tell them you're a radio show and start getting them to do stuff on the camera. <laughs> so yeah, there, some people on the internet found this pizza place and started calling them and interacting with them and they basically, and I have no idea how that conversation went, ring ring, hello Mr. Pizza Place, hi I am Haxer Dude and we're watching you on your cameras, look up and wave. I don't know how that conversation went but I can only imagine. Needless to say it went well enough that they had enough rapport with these people <laughs> to get them to like wave and like they had like drawings on pizza boxes they were holding up and it's, <sighs> So now we're getting to the interesting stuff. So now, okay, now we're, now we're getting, this is getting entertaining again. So level three, this is where it gets a little creepy. So remember Live Free or Die Hard? Everybody see that movie? Yeah, maybe, okay. It's kind of like that. So suddenly, after seeing some of those pictures, that screen in the background is starting to look a little familiar. <laughs> hmm, right? Except, you know, there's no like pretty assassin lady or whatever. So Timothy Oliphant did this with uh, a full truck full of gear, a black ops team. One of the black ops team guys is the uh, French dude who's one of the top five parkour practitioners in the world who can actually jump out of a helicopter and be fine. Um, explosives, custom O-days, malware, giant displays in a truck, magical technology, your typical Hollywood MO, right? <laughs> Eat your heart out, Hollywood. I did it with Shodan, several gallons of espresso, and more curiosity than my cable modem could deal with. So. In the end, though, this depiction from the movie is basically just a really insanely successful social engineering campaign. Because if you remember the film, uh, it was basically him doing a whole bunch of uh, look over here, misdirection, look over here, misdirection, let me steal a whole bunch of money from the government kind of thing. So, hmm. All right. But um, I'm not shooting down uh, helicopters with cars. However, you let me know when there's a system that can do that, and I'll pen test it for free. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you let me shoot down helicopters using cars. I love blowing stuff up, stuff up just as much as everyone else, and it seems more awesome if you can do it with a telnet. <laughs> so, sorry, where were we? Um, massive coolers, like, um, and this guy was really funny because I got called out on this. So, um, pro tip for anybody that wants to go and do this at home. Um, if you run their Java, sometimes their Java will do things like report the host name of your laptop to the controller, and if you're using fully qualified names, it doesn't matter if you're proxied because you know, mylaptop.mydomain.com is in their logs, and a couple days later I get an email from, what is the interloper and why is it connecting to my controller? I'm like, oh. Um, so let's say I gave him, I have the boilerplate disclaimer. You should probably put a password on your system so people can't just get into it. No reply. <laughs> um, so uh, massive, like big, cooler stuff like this, I guess. To the best of my ability, the way I could figure is this is some huge refrigeration warehouse. I don't know if it was a meat packing plant or a giant, I, I have no idea. Just it's, it's a gigantic refrigerator the size of a building that has chillers and, and this many evaporating, you know, 14 evaporative coolers, so big. So here are the logs. Um, none of those are my machine, but those are uh, another hilarious information disclosure vulnerability. Um, you have people's admin level, guest or admin, um, and the name of their computer. So, uh, Dennis apparently runs a Mac. Incidentally, he's the guy that wrote me an email. Um, so who, who's heard of Liebert? Anybody know what a Liebert is? Big, ridiculous UPSs? Yeah, well you can talk to those with SNMP, V2, V3, V3 and shut them off or put them in test mode. Over the internet with no credentials. So anybody want to turn off a data center? Because you can. <laughs> like you think you've got a building like this full of firewalls. Put one in front of this, jeez. Right? Um, VNC, like touch panels that control uh, pumps and relays and valves and turbines and stuff. Um, a lot of these uh, are, are uh, touch screen interface touch panels. You can VNC into them and click and interact with stuff. Uh, again, I have little to no reference to what this stuff is. 
There was some company information at the top that I've sliced off, but this has something to do with fluid, and its measurements are in the thousands. Don't know. Looks interesting. I don't want to hit any buttons because I don't want to like beep, 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 news. Oh. Um, <laughs> Okay, so it's, it's a little freaky, you know, there's, okay, there's some sensitivity potentially, but it's not a fire sale like in the movie, right? No, meet Ilon. So Ilon, there's a company called Echelon, they make a thing called an Ilon. It's for managing LawnWorks networks. LawnWorks networks uh, are a call out to the things that John was describing in the last talk where you have this intricate system of relays and electrical components that work at a very low level that open doors and hit relays and stuff like that. Sometimes they need to talk to each other. Uh, so people built uh, lawn, uh, lawn works. Uh, then again, somebody had the genius idea of putting a web server on it and putting it on the internet and then not putting any credentials or anything in front. Not even HTTPS, nothing, it's open. They're also stackable like Devo hats. This controller <laughs> controls 36 or so businesses in a town downtown in Europe somewhere. No creds. You point your browser at this thing and you are literally looking at the alarm system panel for one of the top level controllers for, I think this is the mall. But um, this was all in Danish, I think? I, Swedish, I don't know. I started looking up these companies on the, on the left, right? So each one of these, I've obfuscated some IP addresses because again, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But um, that little white box there where two IPs are obfuscated, there was like 12 or 13 of those. And each one of those had this huge drop down of businesses. So I found one that was looked the most interesting and I started Googling this stuff. I'm like, oh, Gigantium, what, what is that? Oh, it's kind of like the San Diego Convention Center. It's a big place with an ice skating rink and some alarms and some lights and garage doors and HVAC. Um, and this controller touches all of it. Um, like all, I can defrost the ice skating rink. <laughs> 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 okay, <laughs> what am I going to do with that? I don't know, I'll just save that for later. Um, here's a schematic of the place. They, ha they uh, graciously give you this picture right on their website. Here's our facility, you can rent it. That's okay. <laughs> um, so it holds a thousand people in that main area. So like there, that's a, okay, not bad, pretty big. What's a uh, head to strand camping? Oh, there's um, a, a lot of solar panels uh, off to the left on the bottom frame there and water slides, okay. Um, but it's like some sort of um, getaway resort place that you can go and camp by the beach and there's like a water park and it's like a family vac vacation kind of place. Um, I had no idea what the SCADA controller here controls but there were pages and pages and pages of configs. So I'm guessing it's probably like the facilities, lighting and maybe if they have like a, a, a driveway that has a gate or something, I don't know, but you can, you can mess with that too. Um, Here's another one that's the same sort of deal, some sort of like getaway whole, um, this, this place actually looks look kind of cool, I'd, I'd go there, but it's uh, um, also, inter inter <laughs> hilariously enough, my dyslexia got me and I thought it said scholar up kilt, it doesn't say scholar up kilt. Um, uh, okay, something, you know, skate control, something here, I'm not sure what, I didn't really take the time to find out, but because it's like, you know, a, 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 a plethora of um, cottages, um, I'm suspecting that the SCADA controllers don't control the individual cottages, they can control the industrial stuff around the cottages, lighting, alarm systems, whatever. Um, okay, cool. So I can control power, lights, HVAC, ice skating rinks, garage doors, water pressure and boilers of something like 36 cities, or 36 places in one town. Okay, we're getting a little closer now, right? Okay. Um, so in the fire sale, right, they manipulated stoplights, and other like signs and stuff to like they redirected traffic right in, in New York or something to that effect. Okay, we can do that too. Uh, Econolight controls stoplights and it listens on Telnet. You can just Telnet into it and be like, dude, stoplights. Autoplate. Autoplate are red light cameras, the ones that give you tickets. This is the system that recognizes your license plate, OCRs your license plate, and ships that off to law enforcement to tell them who to send a ticket to. Uh, you may, might not be able to see it, but let me see what line number it is. Um, it says here, in plain English, ah, it's like right in the middle, basic VES with no security. Like you tell that in and boom, menu. No creds, it didn't even ask. There's no, you don't have to worry about default creds, it just let, lets you in. Okay, what about those signs on the freeway that you can change, you can t talk to people on the roads? That's Daktronics. Um, Daktronics makes these things and they're used for both freeway signs and like scoreboards for like sporting events. 
Um, this particular screenshot is the one that got my attention. I went, oh, okay, that's cool. So good to know. I'll write that one down. Um, though props to these guys because all of everything I found with Dactronics was was password protected. Um, nothing, uh, nothing. They did not give anything away, and I was unable to find manual. I was unable to easily find manuals online describing uh, a re password reset process or default credentials or anything like that. So these would actually provide these would provide a challenge uh, to get into. Um, so red light cameras, road signs, and stoplights. Check. How about some current events, right? So who remembers RuggedCom? Anybody been following the whole rug, rug, RuggedCom debacle? It's the, the latest SCADA thing that controls industrial equipment that was uh, attached to the internet like like a month ago. People were doing backflips over RuggedCom. So RuggedCom, same thing, right? This is, uh, you, you log in again, no credentials, um, because the system was set to allow either guest or admin login. Like if you show up and uh, it basically, it's told, the system is told, Visitors that arrive at this page don't need to authenticate. They will be automatically logged in as blah user. Okay. Well, let's look at those passwords. Um, they're gonna. I'm gonna guess that you can probably guess what they are, um, just based on the link, because they kind of match. Um, but in case you really want to know, and I can spell it out for you, I'll just spell it out for you, because um, uh, what's it? Uh, yeah, there's an extension that will, you know, right-click, unobfuscate passwords. Great. So not only, you know, are they letting you in, but they're not, they're not just showing asterisks. They're actually publishing the password and then hiding it. Thanks, guys. Oh, so um, this is one of the more interesting ones. Does this look like malware to anybody? Like I saw this in a browser and went, I'm not running that Java. Does that? I mean, <laughs> am I crazy? Like, be honest. Throw stuff. Whatever. Like. Would you run that? I mean, is there anybody like you'd say, what is this? I don't know. Run Java. Run Java. Run Java. Run Java. Uh, I saw this, took this screenshot, and, and moved along. And I put a message on Twitter, something akin to, oh, I found some SCADA controller somewhere that has uh, some, some kid or something like that came in and defaced it. And this is probably some silly hacker wares group or whatever that was like, oh, look at my ultra ultimate hacks put in French or something. And I'm like, no, no thanks, next. And uh, I ended up talking to a guy on Twitter about it. And he, somehow I got somebody's attention a lot. Um, I saw this and dismissed it as a defacement. Uh, I made a comment on Twitter about seeing what potentially could have been replaced Java. And uh, I got pinged by a guy on, on Twitter. Uh, <laughs> we had a long discussion and he basically said, uh, you know, show me what you were looking at. So I took this screenshot and I showed it to him and he says, oh, just run the Java. And I'm like, <laughs> bad social engineer is bad. No. Uh, he says, no, no, seriously, it's, it's not that scary. It's by design. You can run the Java. It'll be safe. So I opened up a VM and I ran the Java and I saw this. Oh, okay. So it was actually legit. It wasn't actually malware. Me flipping out was a false alarm. But now I'm looking at these numbers and these numbers are in megawatts. Um, so I showed him this screenshot, and then the conversation changed a little <laughs> to, uh, yeah, um, expect a call tomorrow for some, from some interesting people. So at 8.45 the next morning, DHS calls me. <laughs> They're like, hey, we're with I, uh, ISC CERT. Um, we're calling regarding your tweet. I'm like, oh. <laughs> What did I do? I mean, like, am I in trouble? They're like, no, 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 no. Um, we want to get a hold of these people because we think that people putting this stuff on the internet is horrifically evil and bad, and this shouldn't be online. Um, we basically found out that this was a dam in Fumel in a region of France, and this particular dam has already had issues with flooding people. <laughs> Good to know. So by the second day, um, I, the ICS cert guy that called me called... ICS, or I guess they have a cert division in France, and got a hold of them, and France is now scrambling to pull this thing offline. I'm pretty sure they've actually pulled the plug on it, so you shouldn't be able to get it online anymore. But, <coughs> okay, so we've gone from like, you know, people's houses and water, you know, heaters to a five megawatt hydroelectric plant that's flooding people. Okay. Um, so, thinking a little bit longer term, right? I mentioned trending before, right? I mentioned like if you have graphs, you can take measurements and look at numbers and stuff. So let's go back to that system that had, you know, 36 businesses in some city in, in Europe. You can't really see it on the projector, but there's three or four lines uh, that are horizontal in this graph. They're all flat because nothing has changed. This system allows for a user 
to basically select any number of data points out of what this system can read and graph them. That doesn't sound that interesting when I say it like that. But when I say, you can see when the people turn the lights on, you can see when the people turn the alarms on and off, you can see when they open the garage doors, you can see when the water slides are turned on, you can, you can probably watch their rage through the cameras should they be there if you defrost the ice skating rink. <laughs> but suddenly you go into creeper mode because now you can watch the building. You can watch it and say, I know when they come in, I know when the alarms go on, I know when they turn the alarms off, I have a schedule of, of when they go on vacation, I know when there's people in the building, I know when there's not people in the building, I know what temperatures they favor. Like, suddenly you have all this data. What am I gonna do with all of this stuff? Well, since scanning the internet is getting a lot easier, we can actually start taking measurements on this stuff. And once you can start taking measurements, then you start getting a lot of more, I guess, meta, but you, you sort of go up a level, right? Um, but we can actually have measurable results now. So if anybody remembers that webcam stuff that I did back in January, where I found tons of public trend net cameras that were just open everywhere, I thought that it would be wise to go back and look at the numbers. So here are the numbers. Uh, my original blog post in January, uh, I was able to find 560 publicly available cameras. Now these are only trend net. I have on my plate for next time to do something like a dozen other brands of camera to see what else I can find because this is a st systemic problem because these guys share code. Um, so my first blog post, it was in January, I found 560 cameras. In, on February 7th, a friend of mine linked me to an article, hilariously, while I was watching a spy movie, uh, that the, the BBC had picked up the story of these TrendNet cameras and was going berserk over, over 4chan types and people on pastebin looking for boobies. <laughs> there weren't any, believe me. Most of these cameras are horrifically boring. Uh, there are a couple of people that flipped out. I mean, like literally they did backflips because some of these cameras use the same code base as baby monitors and maybe a fifth of them are literally a camera pointed down into a crib, which for some people is freaky, for me is boring, I don't care. Um, so I did a retest to see what the numbers look like after all the hubbub and after words like pedophile were being thrown around. Um, so I did a retest on April 3rd, April 3rd, 464 cameras. Cool, measurable, it works. You scare the crap out of the public and they go look at their camera and go, ah, and they pull it out. So 20% worked, right? So 20, the BBC publication had a, a big measurable result. That's awesome, I like that stuff. The US media picked it up uh, sometime in the middle of April and it didn't do anything. <laughs> they got one more camera. So. But this, this sort of stuff, it scales, right? So for the moment, you know, forget switches, routers, computers, printers, whatever. We can scan the whole internet and record the findings based on what's available. And if we do that a couple of dozen times a year, we can just make a simple graph. Think of it this way, scan the entire internet, look for Telnet. How many devices are there that are listening on Telnet? Write that number down, put it in a graph. Do the same thing again in two weeks. Then record that number and put that number in the graph. Do that for two years and then suddenly we can see if any of our security campaigns are working. Are we as security people actually making an influence on the internet? Now we have a way to measure if we're doing, if we're doing it right, right? So I'm working on it. I'm still, I still need to get this portion done. Um, I have uh, some code that's on my blog that hilariously I wasn't able to fully refine before this talk, but it's on my blog. If anyone wants to go grab it, it's a simple Python script and you can tweak it. Uh, but the idea is I plan on going and, and getting these metrics. I plan on scanning the internet a whole lot more and doing some more interesting stuff. I'm going to try and ex extrapolate trends and hopefully have a lot more interesting stuff before Vegas should I, should I get elected to speak. So um, if you want to stalk me, this is how you can stalk me. Otherwise, I'll be at the bar. <laughs> and apparently I am... 20 minutes early, so if anybody has questions, <laughs> comments, hate mail, sure. So when you're trending like that, how do you distinguish an actual down, uh, decrease in the number of people who are Oh, that's not entirely difficult. If you were to databaseify your findings, you could do it on a per IP basis. And the logic there is actually pretty simple. I mean, for, for a lot of intents and purposes, you're looking at Telnet. 
um, a lot of the PLCs and the SCADA controllers are all listening on Telnet. So one easy way is have a Python script open a connection to this thing and, a and see if it asks you for credentials. If it does ask you for credentials, assume that it's secure, whatever, it's probably just default, but do that. And then if you connect to it later and it doesn't ask you for credentials, you can measure that. Virus? Did you look at any of the EXIF data and the movies you pulled down from the cameras? Uh, there, the, the camera, the EXIF, I don't think that they actually publish EXIF data. They do. <laughs> and it's, it's MJPEG though, so it's like video. Not all of it. Well, I haven't gotten that far, but it's, <laughs> like I said, I have, so there's TrendNet, right? But that, whole, that path that I uh, uh, talked about earlier, the whole like Anani slash MJPEG.CGI. So apparently MJPEG.CGI is this commonly used library that they're passing around. Literally, if you just uh, twiddle with the, the path and you find an MJPEG.CGI, for almost every cheapo camera, it's direct object access to the video feed. So the next iteration of my script will go and find, I don't know, eight, maybe something like that, camera vendors. So I think my numbers will uh, increase from 400 to several thousand. I did it for another brand of camera. I think I did it for a, a D-Link camera. And uh, I found just for that brand alone, something on the order of 1,500. Um, and it worked on all of them. So the difference was the first script that I ran searched for TrendNet cameras and not all the TrendNet cameras were vulnerable. Um, so I found 11,200 cameras and out of that number only 500 or so were vulnerable, right? So not that great of a return, but for the D-Link stuff, I only found 1,500 cameras, but all 1,500 were vulnerable. So I'm up to something on the order of 2,000 publicly accessible live cameras that if they do or don't have encryption is irrelevant because it's a direct object access. You point your browser at a URL and boom, you're looking at video. Um, I will I will say, however, I hope you have a good downpipe because um, I have like a business cable modem at home and I get like 15 megabit down and it pegs it. Because you're pulling live video from every single camera and just your bandwidth and a badge. Uh, anybody else? Questions? Hate mail? Want to throw a bottle at me? No? Go for it. Yeah, uh, so many uh, favorable uh, interactions with the Department of Homeland Security. So far, they've been actually really good. When, 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 when the ICS cert guy called me, at first I was terrified, and I'm like, they're going to pick me up after my talk in a van. Um, they're just going like, to bag me over the head and them out. Um, but uh, by the end of talking to him, like, I was suggesting what sushi places he should go to in Vegas, and he's calling me from his personal phone, and now we're going drinking during Black Hat. So I think it went pretty well. <laughs> no. Go for it. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure the BBC article n drove that message pretty well. Um, uh, the discussions that I had with some of the InfoSec people that talked to me about my findings and releasing 500 publicly accessible webcams to the internet, um, my first sort of line of defense was, well, it's already public. Like, I didn't find something or exploit something that wasn't already there. I just took 600 cameras and put them all in one HTML file. Um, but... Uh, the, uh, the, the questionnaire was, um, you know, let's say you have 10,000 vulnerable home end users. What do you do? Like, as, a, as one researcher guy who, like, my company doesn't pay me to do this. I'm a consultant that does security, but, like, this is, this is, my, this is my hobby. Like, I do this is my fun playtime on the side. Um, like, I don't have corporate resources to actually remediate any of this. I don't have a giant network of people that think I'm really awesome that I can tap to like make phone calls to random strangers. Ha 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 ha, your camera in your living room is watching your cat poop, lol. <laughs> um, yeah, there's ridiculous stuff on these cameras. Um, but, uh, you know, wh what do you do? Um, so I actually had a discussion with the ICS cert guy and he said like, we're, we're the guys that you would call. I said, really? I didn't know that you guys could do that. He says, yeah, it, it's kind of our thing. We're like an emergency response team. So you give us 10,000 IP addresses of home users and we have a, a call center we farm it out to that's within our within our sort of sphere of influence where we say, you know, here's 10,000 IP addresses that need the end user identified and these guys need to get a call from somebody that sounds like their official saying, your web camera in your, in your living room is <coughs> broadcasting all your disgusting crap to the internet. Stop it. It's <coughs> gross. Um, so, I don't know if that uh, answer your question at all. A little... Anybody else? Oh, yeah. Sweet. Well, then you get to go to lunch early.
Right on.